Hello everyone! In the first episode of the new series, we are going to talk about history. You are wondering why I'm wearing this red hat? Well, it's because we are talking about the Commandant Cousteau. And just as Jacques the Cousteau needed the Calypso, we need to upgrade our equipment. You can help us by making a donation on our TP page. You will find the link in the GIF's description just here. We are incredibly grateful for your support. Let's our journey begin! If the underwater world is so accessible nowadays, it's because of this man, Jacques Yves Cousteau. Did you know that with the help of Emil Gagnon, an engineer specialized in application of gas, he invented the Aqualung? You know it's the modern regulator that all scuba divers use to breathe the air stocked in their tank. The most important gift he gave us is a desire to explore and discover the depths of the ocean. How did he manage? Like this. Through all his documentaries, the Commandant showed us the wonders of what was at the time a completely unknown world. Imagine you are in front of your TV, watching these guys exploring and discovering new species. I am sure you would be there with them. Before he became a legend, Jacques was a guy like us. Actually, he dreamed of becoming an airplane pilot. But a terrible car crash took his dream away. He lost the use of his limb, and the doctor even suggested the amputation of the limb. Cousteau refused and instead chose to swim in the Mediterranean Sea as a form of physical therapy. He started almost as a duty, but fell in love with the sea and started to discover the beauty of his underwater world. With his friends, he used the garden hose like a snorkel to breathe from the surface. Since at that time, uh, wetsuit, mask and uh, snorkels, as we know them, didn't exist yet. In 1942, during the World War II, he filmed his first documentary with three other friends, called Par 18 Mètres de Fond, in which he showed a spearfishing session. For the first time, French people got a glimpse of the underwater world through the screen of their television. But Cousteau's deepest desire was to own a boat and explore the seas with his family and make underwater movies. 1950 is a turning point. On the 19th of July, the millionaire Thomas Lowell Kines, an English politician and philanthropist, donated him the Calypso, a mining sweeping boat that you can see here. Oh, and do you know why he wore this iconic hat? Well, there are many anecdotes about its origins, and it's difficult to say which one is the truth. The only certainty is that in the 19th century, deep sea divers enclosed in a canvas suit and a copper helmet wore a wool hat to protect the head from the shock of cold air blown continuously in their helmet. Soon, the red hat became the symbol of divers, and subsequently, Cousteau adopted it as a distinctive feature. Ok, let's go back to Cousteau. After acquiring his boat, he has to quickly understand how to turn his uh, enthusiasm into tangible money, because refitting the Calypso and gathering a crew were quite expensive tasks. Indeed, the boat had to be extensively remodeled by changing the interior, installing a flying bridge to implement a diving platform, applying new navigational aids and building a false nose to decrease water friction. Cousteau managed to raise the fund necessary for his campaign with many difficulties. He had to sell many of his possessions and made debts to afford the cost of both crew and boat. The first exploration as a commandant was at the discovery of the Red Sea, where he and his team classified many new species. In this occasion, he made also his first encounter with a shark who didn't attack him 
has the prejudice has taught him to fear. Afterwards, we could say he explored the entire world. He crossed the Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, went to New Zealand, Polynesia, the Sea of Cortez, Galapagos, Clipperton in the Pacific Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, Madagascar, Alaska, Antarctica, Amazon, Australia, South Africa, Canada, Cuba, Indonesia, the Mekong, the Danube, the Lake Baikal, and even traveled across the Nile. As you can see, the list is as long as it is extraordinary. Even though traveling nowadays has become much easier, very few of us can claim to have visited all these places. In the end, Cousteau gave us 150 movies. Through all these films, Cousteau desire was to present this unknown world to us, uncovering its secrets. Because he was aware that when people appreciate and love something, it is easier for them to take action to protect it. He left us with an inestimable legacy. He engraved his passion and love for nature on the earth of many of us. Of course, the first inexperienced and ill-advised interaction his team had with animals could shock many of us. But as the famous French uh, ecologist Nicola Hulot says, I didn't start out as an ecologist, I became one. After all, the term ecologist is a wide, and our personal experience affects it as well. We wonder what it means for you. If you want to share your opinion with us, you can write it in the comment section. For us, to put it simply, be an ecologist is to be aware of all the living things, including us humans, and treating them with respect and dignity. The planet is a home of everyone. By learning to better understand each other's characteristics and needs, we'll be able to keep our house tidy, clean and functioning for a long time. We are all at different stages of ecology. Some of us are just starting to develop this way of thinking. And that's perfectly okay. The more we observe and the more we feel our connection with nature grow and with it, the need to preserve it. In the end, we share the same objective as Cousteau. This is a tiny contribution, but just like him, we want you to witness the beauty of the seas. We are starting small, but our passion is huge. And who knows where time will bring us. If you want to help us to build a community of sea lovers, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It will be a starting point for great adventures. So thank you for watching the video and see you the next week!